Have you heard about the tragedy of Yakov Zhukashvili? Yeah, I didn't think so. It's not a story the Soviets would have told you during the regime of Joseph Stalin. It's a Soviet legend nowadays, but during the troubling time of the Second World War, it was a terrible secret. Yakov Zhukashvili was the eldest son of Losev Vizarianovich Zhukashvili. Losev was a bank robber who later changed his name and became the supreme leader of the USSR with the new moniker, Joseph Stalin. Joseph Stalin was convinced that Hitler would not break his pact and invade Russia despite Roosevelt and Churchill's warnings to him that he would. There is only one unauthorized picture of Stalin's immediate reaction of looking betrayed and defeated to the news about Hitler turning on his word and invading the USSR. But there is no picture or anecdote about him feeling sorry for his eldest son when he got captured by Germans at the front lines. Welcome to Nutty History, and today we will uncover the dark truth about how Joseph Stalin abandoned his son in a death camp. In August 1941, Stalin issued Order No. 270, stating that any officer or commissar taken prisoner during the war was a traitor and would have a fatal welcome if they returned to Russia. Even the relatives of these traitors would also be liable for arrest if they attempted to provide sanctuary to these escaped prisoners. This caused a stir among the ranks of the Soviet party for the obvious reason that many young soldiers captured by Germans were related to officers of the party and the government, but more important, fingers were pointing at Stalin himself. It was rumored in the government alleys of Moscow that Stalin's eldest son, Yakov Zhuzhkatvili, had been captured by the Nazis in July of 1941. But it seems that Stalin was aware of such gossip, and this is particularly why Order No. 270 was issued. Stalin had disavowed his son and arrested his second wife, Yulia Meltzer, which she spent two years imprisoned. The reason for such rumors was the propaganda leaflets distributed by Nazi airplanes over the front lines. Yosef Goebbels met Yakov in the concentration camp and tried his best to persuade the son of Stalin to aid German efforts against his own father, but Yakov politely refused to aid in any way. That, however, didn't stop Nazi propagandists from using a picture of a smiling Yakov with the Nazi officers to encourage soldiers of the Red Army to surrender. They also falsified in the leaflet that Yakov had surrendered willingly when he tried to resist the arrest at all costs. Yakov Zhuzhkavili was only a reserve fighter in the Red Army, but when the war broke out, he was asked to join the battle like any other typical commander. Stalin didn't even bother to see his son off personally. He called him on the phone and shouted an order, go and fight. Yakov was part of the Red Army fighting at the Battle of Smolensk during the second phase of Operation Barbarossa. The Austere had advanced 500 kilometers into the USSR in the 18 days after the invasion on June 22, 1941. The Soviet 16th, 19th, and 20th armies were surrounded and destroyed just east of Smolensk. However, many of the men from the 19th and 20th armies managed to escape the pocket, but not Yakov. He was fully aware that if he retreated, his father would never let him live down the shame of being a coward. So he asked his battery to hold their ground, and his unit was captured on July 16, 1941, among 300,000 other Russian soldiers. At first, Germans had no idea what a considerable asset they had managed to capture at Smolensk. But the soldiers of the battery that were under his command weren't happy about Yakov not allowing them to retreat when they had the chance. They betrayed his identity to the Nazi army, hoping that he would be punished or pay for his relationship with Stalin with his life. However, the Nazis had no such intentions. They knew the worth of having Stalin's eldest son imprisoned and rather treated him in a civilized fashion. They interrogated him about his personal and political views instead of trying to coerce valuable information about the Red Army or Stalin himself. Their ultimate plan was to entice Yakov into joining the German ranks and make him the vanguard of Nazi propaganda to demonstrate how Stalin's own son betrayed him. But Yakov refused to cooperate with Nazis despite the preferential treatment. Then they tried to use him as collateral. After facing disastrous results in the Battle of Stalingrad, the Nazis tried to exchange Yakov for Friedrich Paulus, the captured commander of the German 6th Army at Stalingrad. However, Stalin had no love for his son and told Germans that he would not trade a field marshal for a lieutenant. Learning this, Hitler made a more worthy offer, Yakov Zhugasvili for Leo Rubal. Rubal was Hitler's favorite nephew and he doted on him and enjoyed spending time with him. Stalin was too stubborn. He was under the impression that his son was indeed a coward who willingly surrendered to the Germans as the Nazi propaganda was advertising. 
When Stalin was made aware that the rumors of his son's capture during the Battle of Smolensk were true, Stalin shook his head, expressing his disappointment that Yakov was a failure and couldn't even take his own life in time. But later, as information began to trickle through the propaganda, Stalin learned that his son had indeed been taken against his will and had not betrayed his company. It is believed that in 1942, Stalin tried multiple discreet attempts to rescue Yakov from the German concentration camps, but every single attempt was unsuccessful. When Yakov was born in 1907, his father wasn't known as the leader of the Soviet Union. Joseph was fated to become a priest. However, he rebelled and renounced Christianity to become an atheist. He was also a bank robber who robbed a bank in Tiflis the same year to steal about 3.4 million US dollars for the Bolshevik cause. His daring stunt secured his place among Vladimir Lenin's most coveted followers. Yakov's mother, Yekaterina, didn't live long enough to see her husband succeed through the ranks of the Soviet party in the following years. Tsarist police were hunting Joseph for the robbery, so the family had to flee. At the age of 22, Yekaterina died of typhus, seven or nine months after birthing Yakov while hiding in Baku, Azerbaijan. The grief of losing his wife drove Joseph away from his family, and he plunged himself into revolutionary duties. Unlike his ruthless father, who renamed himself Stalin, or the Man of Steel, Yakov was a sensitive and withdrawn young man. Stalin saw that as a weakness and forbade Yakov from following in his footsteps. He physically and emotionally hurt Yakov, and some historians believe that as a son bore too much resemblance to his mother, Joseph Stalin disdained him for reminding him of a heartbreaking past. When Yakov moved in with his father, he quickly left and began living with a woman named Zoya Gunina, the daughter of an Orthodox priest. Yakov was in love and wanted to marry Zoya, so he asked for Stalin's permission. Stalin was furious, and his anger was so intense that it caused Zoya to flee the home in terror. Yakov spent two years in German camps, at first in Hamelburg in Franconia, then near Lübeck, and finally in the Sachsenhausen concentration camp near Berlin. One of his fellow prisoners reported that when Yakov heard German propaganda broadcast on the radio, he was completely distraught. Stalin was quoted allegedly in the propaganda denying Yakov was his son. By this time, the Nazis were getting frustrated by Yakov's defiance to cooperate. On April 14, 1943, Yakov was found deceased under controversial circumstances. It is believed that on that fateful day, Yakov attempted to escape the concentration camp at Sachsenhausen. He had carefully navigated a maze of tripwires and reached the fence at the edge of the camp where it is possible that he was discovered. Now, instead of surrendering, Yakov defiantly shouted at a nearby SS guard, Don't be a coward! Fire! Fire! And then he grabbed the fence with the guard firing a single bullet. But investigations done in 2000, under the leadership of Professor Erickson, have revealed that Yakov deliberately put himself in mortal danger to get it over with. The catalyst behind Yakov's attempt to cut things short might have been the combination of Stalin's responsibility for the Cotton Force atrocity, Yakov's feeling of abandonment because of Order No. 270, and an argument with fellow British office prisoners who were bullying him. Stalin didn't learn about his son's demise for months after the war and offered a $250,000 reward in East Germany to anyone who could provide details of his death. In her book, 20 Letters to a Friend, Svetlana wrote, Stalin only knew that Yakov had been fired at, but not where or why. British and U.S. intelligence were aware of Yakov's fate due to discovering the photographs of Yakov's body and a letter from Nazi commander Heinrich Himmler confirming his demise. However, Churchill and Roosevelt kept this information from Stalin for a long time to save him from suffering. Only after hearing the news that Yakov had died in German captivity, Stalin changed his opinion about his son, saying he was a real man. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and share and subscribe to our channel to see more amazing Nutty History content.